Kim, what's on your radar? Well, the term mass formation psychosis trended over the weekend with so many searches it broke the internet. When people went to search for the term on Google, a couple of strange things happened. Some people saw this odd disclaimer from Google saying the results were changing quickly and that it would take time for results to be added by reliable sources. What does this even mean? I thought when you Googled something, it would bring up sites relating to the topic. Why would Google need time to add results by quote unquote reliable sources? Sounds like they're censoring search results. Well, a few hours later, when people searched for the term, a bunch of sites began to pop up claiming it was a new far right buzzword or one attributed to anti-vaxxers. Well, it's very difficult to find any information using Google. So I had to turn to DuckDuckGo in order to find any relevant information. So what is mass formation psychosis? Well, the term came recently from the Joe Rogan, Dr. Robert Malone interview that aired this past Friday, but was also heard and explained in more detail during Dr. Peter McAuliffe's interview with Rogan. We're in what's called a mass formation psychosis. This is very important. I give credit to Dr. Matthias Desmet in the University of Ghent in Belgium, and recently Dr. Mark McDonald, psychiatrist from L.A. Mark McDonald's got a new book out the United States of Fear, describing how the mass psychosis developed. What your listeners need to know is a mass psychosis is when there is a group think that develops that's so strong that it leads to something horrific. And the examples are these mass suicides that occur in these religious cults. The example is Nazi Germany, when people walk into gas chambers and were gassed. These horrific things. And, and four elements here. It's very important, Joe. First, there must be a period of prolonged isolation, lockdowns. Number two, there must be a, a, a withdrawal of things taken away from people that they used to enjoy. That's happened. Number three, there must be constant, incessant, free-floating anxiety. All this news cycle, all the, the deaths and the hospitalizations, more, more variant mutant strains, everything, people becoming scared over and over again. And the last thing, number four, the capper. The capper is there must be a single solution offered by an entity in authority. And this case is clear. Worldwide, the solution was vaccination. Everybody must take the vaccination. It's not a U.S. program. It's not a European program. It's everywhere. And you know what, Joe? It doesn't matter what vaccine it is. It could be uh, Chinavac, Coronavac. It could be Novavax. It could be Pfizer, Moderna, J&J. &J. It's interesting that it doesn't even matter what vaccine it is. It's just take a vaccine, take any vaccine. And so what Mass psychosis says, is number four, the solution, there's no limit to the absurdity of the solution. So Dr. McCullough attributes the idea to Dr. Matthias Desmet, a professor of clinical psychology at Ghent University in Belgium, one of the top universities in the world. The four conditions that lead up to mass formation psychosis result in people who are radically intolerant and people who are irrational in their solutions. So in regards to this pandemic, we're seeing this intolerance of the unvaccinated, where many people who consider themselves very open-minded or even quote unquote woke are saying things they believe, are saying that they believe the unvaccinated should be removed from society in some way. So the most common way to remove the unvaccinated so far has been through requiring vaccine passports to enter restaurants, bars, movie theaters, malls, and other venues, requiring vaccine passports to work or even travel. So this is all done in an attempt to not only encourage people to get vaccinated, but also to reduce risk, which people believe is attributable to the unvaccinated. So there are a lot of people in society right now who I would consider to be radically intolerant of unvaccinated people and will go to great lengths to stay away from them. And many people, like myself, believe their solutions are irrational. The virus seems to be spreading through vaccinated and unvaccinated populations alike, so segregating based on vaccination status doesn't make any sense to me. But let's talk about the four conditions that lead up to this point and other examples throughout history. The first condition is some sort of social isolation. So the social isolation can be a group that is isolated from society, like cults living out in the middle of nowhere groups that are isolated from each other through segregation or apartheid, or groups within a society that don't intermingle, like cultural, ethnic, or religiously different groups. So the first condition is some sort of social isolation from others. Now, lockdowns and not having any social interaction with one another could also count in this category. The second condition is some sort of despair, loss of enjoyment, perceived negative change in lifestyle. Obviously, this entire pandemic has created a massive loss of enjoyment and severely shifted lifestyles for many. In the example of a religious cult, they
they think this earth life is undesirable and blame infidels or sinners or even just the human condition. In the example of segregated societies or societies that persecute different people, be they a different race, ethnicity, religion, or in the case of this pandemic, medically different, people feel a loss of something in their lives and blame these others for that loss. But basically, the second condition is life isn't so great and these others are to blame. The third condition is being in a constant state of fear, anxiety, or anger. And I think this one speaks for itself. When a person is in a constant state of fear, anxiety, fear or anxiety, they'll do anything to relieve that fear and anxiety. And the fourth condition is a leader or group of leaders who come along and say they have the solution to the fear and anxiety and can make things better. They offer a solution and the people become fixated and follow through with that solution, be it mass suicide, apartheid, genocide, forced religious conversions. These are the most extreme, but they're probably smaller, less obvious examples. I would say mass incarcerations of black men in America is probably another example of this. Blacks and whites stayed largely segregated within society. There was a perceived erosion of safety in the community. Fear, anxiety, and anger resulted. And the leadership, Clinton and Biden in this case, came along with the solution of locking people up. Now, Trump's wall is another possible example. Americans are isolated from people south of our border. There has been a there's been some despair and a feeling of loss of the good life, fear, anxiety and anger resulted. And the solution was to build a wall and people became fixated on this solution. So the question is, do we think we're living in a mass formation psychosis under Fauci's leadership where the only solution is vaccination and only vaccination will save us from this pandemic? Are people following nonsensical guidance blindly? Well, I want to play this clip for you of Fauci on CNN's State of the Union. Tell me if this guidance makes sense. How should vaccinated and boosted people behave? Can they go into a restaurant, eat safely indoors right now? You know, when you're having such a, I call it a tsunami of infections, Dana, we are seeing people who are vaccinated and boosted who are getting breakthrough infections. So when you're in a situation where you have so many infections going out, the thing that you want to say is that if you want to do things like that, better do them in a setting where you know the people around you are vaccinated and boosted. So Fauci says fully vaccinated people are getting the virus, so only be around fully vaccinated people. <laughs> Rather than push back on this nonsense, Dana Bash just goes along with it. Doesn't, see, doesn't this seem like an example of what could be considered mass formation psychosis? So I'll ask you guys. I mean, a lot of this stuff is just no longer really making sense. We're still following Fauci's guidance. I'm kind of wondering why. Uh, but it, it does seem like about a third of the population is maybe, maybe, just maybe, under this mass formation psychosis. What do you think? I, well, I agree. I mean, I agree with you about, I don't like Dr. Fauci. I don't agree with his recommendations. I don't think the unvaccinated should be stigmatized. I don't think they should be, there should be mandates, lockdowns, all of that we agree on. But I don't, this does not sound rigorously defined enough, this mass formation psychosis. It sounds like, Right. I, I mean, I agree that many of my fellow Americans and many of the people we're taking orders from, like, are wrong. Or, but I don't know that it's, it's a. Do you know? It's not a. Think, it's not a malady. They're just wrong. I don't. It's not. I don't think well, it's. Tr I don't think it's. I don't think it's. I don't think it is an epidemic. It's just, or except right. in some kind of metaphoric sense. But if the leader, yeah, right. The leader might be wrong. But if people are blindly following the leader without questioning. Wouldn't that be the psychosis? Well, it, it's, it it's, so, it, it's so wild that, uh, look, to call, calling people that you disagree with in the country crazy, I think it's just very comforting to people right. because it allows you to then not have to grapple uh, with their, you know, with the arguments that they're making. And, you know, a lot of, kind of liberals uh, watched what this guy said about the mass formation psychosis and were like, yeah. All of that definitely applies to these anti-vaxxers. Right, right, like right, like that, right, like, right. But that also gets them off the hook from dealing with the arguments. I think it, the, what, what you need to do is try to look rationally at each situation. And if, if there are no reasonable, simple explanations for things, then you can start going for hocus like mass formation psychoses. But all of these things are much more easily explained. I mean, people, for some reason, are having a very difficult time with the idea 
that the that the virus has mutates, mm -hmm. and that they they want to they want to be told in March 2020 precisely how to respond to this pandemic and precisely how it's going to unfold. And if anything new comes up, then it's like aha, I to we told you they were lying. Now, as we've discussed multiple times on the show, they, they they have lied. They have lied about significant things, and so they have lost credibility. But at the same time. This is, this is shifting in, in real time. This is a novel coronavirus. But there are other explanations. So th these people may or may not have medical expertise. We'll leave that for somebody else to decide. What do they know about like fascism in the 1920s and 1930s? I mean, yeah. I mean come on. You know, so you know, th there, there has been this effort to say that, well, in Germany, uh, during the Nazi period, the people just went insane. And that, too, is right. a way to not address what, what actually happened. It's actually you a way know. of denying responsibility. No, it they is, didn't go insane. Right. They let this happen. It is, a, it is a way of denying responsibility. And the way that Rogan teed it up was interesting. He's like, these are, very, these are super educated, smart people. How, and they just snapped. How, you know, how did this happen? Not, not, that's not how he teed it up. That's how Malone uh, teed it up. It's like, no, no, no. It, that's not a, no, there's a lot more happened. There right. was a world war. Right. There was resent, that, resentfulness about the debts, uh, the being forced to pay for World War One, and, you know, the, the industrialization. And they're like, there's, I mean, this is a period study. You can write books. You can read, John, you can read thousands of pages on the, on the, you know, what goes into the rise of Nazi Germany. In, in and fact, it's not just people went insane. John Maynard Keynes, right out of the Treaty of Versailles, right. was like, you are creating the conditions that are going to give rise to fascism and to a second world war. Like, he... He, he predicted everything. Right. That's how rational it was in the, in the way that it unfolded, that you could see it coming. So then to say that they went crazy, rather than to say that fascist leaders exploited all of these conditions that were created you know, by the vindictiveness right. of the Treaty of Versailles, is, is, giving, every, is giving everybody a, a pass. And the same with uh, mass right. incarceration in the 1980s. Easy explanation. There, there, there was a rise in, in crime, which came from the hollowing out of the manufacturing base of the United States. There was also a white backlash to civil rights from the 60s, and the, and, and the political response from a lot of white politicians was, we're going to do mass incarceration. You don't need to say that people are, are crazy, because that lets people like Biden and Clinton off the hook. There wasn't a mass psychosis yeah, there. Uh, it was, I, but I mean, I guess you're just kind of trading, right? So it's either there's mass psychosis or there's like mass stupidity or even maybe mass, uh, you know, e evil, I guess. Like people that there's are mass just, humanity is what I'd say. There's mass humanity. Yeah. Humanity can be manipulated. Uh, and depending on what the conditions are that have been created, it, you know, they, they can be manipulated in different ways. Well, I think this is just a way of saying people are being gaslit. So, it, it, you know, if, if you believe in the ability to gaslight, then there would be this ability to gaslight a mass group of people. But I agree with you that I don't like that it takes the responsibility away from people. You know, when, when you're saying, well, you're just crazy, then you are kind of um, negating maybe their own personal choice in this or, or their own personal responsibility in whatever it is that they're doing. So, I mean, I totally agree with that. But I do still feel like there, you know, when I look back at, at, at the atrocities that have happened uh, throughout history, it's hard to imagine that people are just that there's mass inhumanity, you know, where people are just cruel and evil. I would rather believe that very good, smart people just kind of went crazy. They were gaslit. I, I would but, prefer to believe that, I suppose. And I guess one, one, one last point would be that, say, like, it's true that these leaders like, find these single solutions that they try to, you know, push everybody's anger onto. And in the case of Nazi Germany, we, we, we know what that was, and we know the evil that right. resulted from that. But that's completely different with the vaccine because, okay, yes, the vaccine doesn't stop the spread, but even today, if you're, if you're boosted, you're 20 times less likely to get infected, which means it does slow the spread. You are massively less likely, if you're vaccinated, to if you're be boosted. hospitalized, even with, you know, with Omicron yeah. or with Delta, and you're massively less likely to die. And so when people have intolerance of, uh, on, on this question, it's, it's not some type of kind of ir irrational, uh, you know, race-based intolerance. Right. It's not racism. It's like, no, there, there's actually something going on. Where if you're unvaccinated, well, you're more likely to get infected, more likely to go to the hospital, and more likely to die. Now, you're not, you're not safe if you're vaccinated, but you're safer. And, and that is a real distinction.
Yeah. All right, we're getting the cue. We got yes. We got. We got to go. We're a little bit over. Uh, thank you, Kim. We'll have more rising right after this and more discussion.